Hey guys, Joel's coming at you with another reasoning session and today I'm going to be talking about the battles we face and if an easy victory is any indication whether we're really dealing with our real enemy. Come now and let us reason together. Now, if you like these videos, you can check me out also on Rumble or on Zap It. I post on there and the links are in the description. The thing is, YouTube is doing some really crazy things with shadow banning. All right, so I just got to show you guys this. This is an example of some shadow banning. Uh, this is a channel that has some extreme shadow banning. But we see here three days ago, this video was posted that says it has no views. But if I go right here, it says that over 9,000 people like this video. Wait a minute. What? But yeah, like some of us have really gone through the gauntlet, but this message isn't dying. It's still moving forward because it's coming through from a higher realm and Source is just taking it to those platforms where the people will be ready to receive it. And with that out of the way, I'm going to jump straight into it. Today we're talking about David Hamelik or King David. And it's very interesting because a lot of people remember his greatest victory in when he defeated the giant Goliath or Goliath. But let's have a look at this story a bit closer. We read in the 17th chapter of the first book of Shmuel or Samuel where David actually goes to the battlefield and takes food for his brothers. When he gets there, he sees this huge giant from the Philistine taunting the Israelites saying, you know, you can't defeat me. Where is your God? We're going to absolutely annihilate your whole race. And it's looking pretty bleak for the whole nation of Israel. But David comes along and he knows his authority in the name of God. And he goes in and charges at this Philistine who actually has no covenant with the living God with source. And just using a small pebble in his slingshot, he fells this giant and cuts off his head victorious, literally saving the whole nation of Israel. So that's the story of that, and he comes out on top, and he's defeated his enemy, but actually, Goliath wasn't his real enemy, because once he defeated Goliath, all the women and everybody was cheering, saying, Saul, or the king of Israel, has slain thousands, and David tens of thousands. And we read that Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more? but the kingdom. And Saul eyed David from that day forward. And so this was David's real enemy, was actually the king of Israel who was right under his nose the whole time. It wasn't some foreigner coming against him. It was literally his own king. And we read that it came to pass on the morrow that an evil spirit from God came upon Saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house. Now this can also mean like an evil spirit came from the Elohim and he just kind of lost his mind and he was ranting and raving and just pacing up and down inside his house. That word prophesying is the word Nabi and it literally means to rave ecstatically. And David played with his hand as at other times, meaning he played music for Saul to kind of calm him down. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand and Saul cast the javelin for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because Yahweh was with him and was departed from Saul. And if we go back, we can actually see how Saul went against the command of Yahweh. And from there, he actually lost the whole kingdom. He actually stopped being a vessel to carry out the divine justice that this force was relaying him to do. But this marks the beginning of so many attempts that Saul would take against the life of David. We read in the next chapter... An evil spirit from Yahweh was upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin to the wall. And David fled and escaped that night. So this actually happened twice on two separate occasions. And it got so bad that Saul would kill anybody who even defended David, even if it was his own son. We read that later at Saul's dinner table, it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan, his son, 
Wherefore come not the son of Jesse to eat meat, neither yesterday nor today? And Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked leave of me to go to Bethlehem, which is where he was from. And we read that after Jonathan explained the situation with David's family offering a sacrifice, it says that Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, You son of the perverse, rebellious woman, do not I know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to the, your own confusion and unto the confusion of your mother's nakedness? This was literally a curse back in the day. For as long as the son of Jesse lives on the ground, you shall not be established, nor your kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. So he's saying, you know, as long as this guy's alive, you're not going to inherit the throne because he's a threat to your very kingdom. And Jonathan answered Saul his father and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What has he done? And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay David. So it was pretty obvious. And it says, And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life. And literally, Saul would lead many campaigns against the life of David. There is one instance when Saul was returned from following the Philistine that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. And Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coast by the way, where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. Now this is an ancient Hebrew euphemism for something else, but we'll get into that maybe in another episode. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which Yahweh said unto you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it shall seem good unto you. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him, because he has cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, Yahweh forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, Yahweh's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of Yahweh. So even though Saul was making these advances against the life of David, when David had the opportunity to take his life from him, David wouldn't do it, because he knew that that authority came from, from Jehovah, the Lord of seed time and harvest. And if David sowed a seed of revenge, then he would need to reap his own harvest for that. Saul already had his harvest coming and he knew that and he understood that, but he didn't want to muddy the waters and step in the way of Yahweh, divine justice, closing that cycle. So after all that happened, David arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul saying, my Lord, the king, and when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. He's still showing this guy reverence, no matter how much he would just wanted to kill him. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hear you men's words, saying, Behold, David seeks your hurt. Behold, this day your eyes have seen how Yahweh has delivered you today into my hand in the cave. And some bade me kill you, but my eyes spared you. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is Yahweh's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of your robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of your robe and killed you not. Know you and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in my hand, and I have not sinned against you. Yet you hunt my soul to take it. Yahweh judge between me and you, and Yahweh avenge me of you, but my hand shall not be upon you. And there's another time when a similar thing happens. Saul is asleep and David has a chance to kill him, but he doesn't kill him. He just takes his spear and his water jug and he calls out and says the same thing. You know, wherefore does my Lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done or what evil is in my hand? Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will no more do you harm, because my soul was precious in your eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. And David even held this respect for Saul even after he was dead. Now Saul had to face the Philistines, and they were badly outnumbered. And after running from this justice of Yahweh, Saul and his whole troop fall to the Philistine. And eventually David hears of this news. And it says, David took hold on his clothes and rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening. 
for Saul and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of Yahweh and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen from the sword. So even after Saul did all of that to David, he still had the respect. But the point I want to make in this video is that we got to know our enemy. You know, we can't be content just with fighting a giant that easily falls. We got to realize the enemy that's hiding in the shadows, that's right under our nose, and that actually has strategies and campaigns just bent on wiping us out, on annihilating us. We have to know our enemy and make sure that we don't settle and realize them for what they are. We can't be distracted in this time because this is when the real pressure is being put in the whole world. We are literally seeing the pressure of the old world come against that which the kingdom of heaven is manifesting. So we being agents of the kingdom of heaven have to really know our enemy and have to know our authority and stand up against it and fight. You know, Goliath was fell in just a couple hours. But for Saul, it took over a decade from the anointing of David to all Saul's campaigns against him and David literally running for his life to David actually ascending the throne as king, as David Hamelech. So stick with it, but make sure you know your real enemy. So I love you guys. I'll check you in the next reasoning sesh. It's like really hot today. You got over 40 degrees, but that's okay because in Calgary, we're going to enjoy it while we can. So stay optimistic and manifest your best life yet. Joel signing out once again. Agape. Salam. Namaste. Shalom. Yeah.